ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Guru Parulkar. Good morning and welcome back and welcome to some of you who could not be here yesterday. Uh, I hope the ones who were here yesterday agree that we had a great start yesterday, number of very good breakout sessions, and then uh, we did have a very good opening uh, keynote panel uh, on everything uh, open. Um, and so at least my takeaway from that panel is that open source and open communities will play a big role in SDN and networking in general. I hope you agree. The panelists yesterday were very convincing. They made a very good argument that that is the future. Not only networking in general, but uh, that's what is happening in all parts of computing and communication. So that was very important. Now, uh, as you might have noticed, if you have been looking at the emails or if you've been looking at the posters outside, that the theme of ONS 2014 is lead the transformation. So I thought I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about what we mean by the transformation, and it is kind of repeat for some of you from yesterday. But as we know that the current network infrastructure has some systemic problems. Uh, we cannot bring new revenue generating services. We cannot innovate fast enough. The CapEx and OpEx are growing very, very quickly as the traffic is growing. And as a result, this industry is in under pressure. And the hope is that SDN, as a promising technology, as a disruptive innovation, will transform this infrastructure. So that is the transformation that we are talking about when we talk about lead the transformation. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are at the beginning of this transformation. Any disruptive innovation takes this particular S curve uh, for the adoption, and we are right now uh, where early adopters are adopting and deploying SDN, but we still have a long ways to go. And that is what makes this particular time uh, very exciting and time to engage and help do this transformation. So what we are trying to do at ONS this year is to showcase some of these uh, projects or organizations that are leading this transformation on one hand. On the other hand, we are helping others who are not necessarily in the middle of it to help you understand and get in the middle of it so that you can also lead this transformation and participate in this transformation. So that is kind of what the theme of this uh, ONS is. Now, as I mentioned, SDN is a disruptive innovation. And so the question is, how do we think about disruptive innovation? The good news is that in the high tech industry, SDN is not the first disruptive innovation and it's not going to be the last one. Actually, our high tech industry has number of those disruptive innovation. And the good news is there are experts such as Clayton Christensen uh, from Harvard Business School who has made a profession of studying disruptive innovation and what they mean. So one aspect, the simplest part of his theory is that when you look at a disruptive innovation and compare it against what he calls legacy sustained innovation, what happens is that at the beginning, that disruptive innovation does not have the necessary performance, it does not have the necessary features, okay? And that's what you hear about when you hear about open flow enabled switches or SDN control plane, we don't have the, the performance, we don't yet have the necessary feature set, okay? But what makes the disruptive innovation important and succeed in the long term is because they offer a compelling value proposition that the legacy or the current uh, way of doing things don't offer. So as we know, in the case of SDN, the compelling value proposition is choices, ability to customize, ability to innovate quickly, reduce OPEX and CAPEX, and accelerate new services. So these have been, I mean, if you look at it last several years, everybody recognizes that this is the compelling value proposition of SDN, and that is what the industry needs. It is true that when you look at the building blocks of open flow switches, network operating system, and so on, 
It, they don't have the necessary performance. You repeatedly hear that open flow switches do not have the number of flow table entries or uh, they don't have the number of tables or when you think about SDN control plane, you uh, hear that they don't have the distributed uh, SDN control plane, they don't have fault tolerance. It is all true, right? They don't have it. But if you believe in what has happened to other disruptive innovation, what happens is over a period of time, all of these performance and features are going to get fixed. And then they do, there will be a time, then because of its compelling value proposition, it's going to take over the legacy sustained innovation. And this has happened again and again uh, in the high tech industry, and we shouldn't be surprised uh, the same thing will happen to SDN. In fact, if you look at the SDN building blocks, such as white boxes and open flow optimized switches, open source network control plane or uh, SDN control plane as well as application. We are already seeing this, okay? So for example, if you look at the white boxes and open flow optimized switches, we are already starting to see open flow optimized silicon from Centec, for example. Um, there is also a very, very good box that is coming out from Corsa networks or Corsa systems. Uh, they have a presentation in the startup track. They have an exhibit. Check it out in terms of millions of flow table entries, multiple tables, everything that people wanted in an open flow switch, they are offering it. But right now it is based on FPGA. So obviously you can expect that it may be more expensive or it has more power, uh, but those things are happening. Similarly, when it comes to white boxes, you know that there are many white boxes that are starting to become available. And on top of these white boxes, there are even open flow uh, libraries that are starting to become available from big switch, for example, and so on. So you can see that is happening. When it comes to network operating systems or controllers and open source, there are a number of those starting to happen as well. In terms of open daylight, uh, you heard a lot about it. Uh, floodlight uh, from Big Switch, for example. And there's another one that uh, Open Networking Lab has been working on called ONOS. And these are just a few examples uh, that are uh, out there that are starting to become available. When it comes to applications, there are a number of them that are there as well. Network virtualization is considered kind of the killer app. However, there are other uh, applications as well that have to do with automation, provisioning, troubleshooting, access control, control of NFV, and so on. So you can see in each one of these categories, um, there are building blocks that are becoming available. They have the performance, they have the features, and this pattern is going to continue. Now, there is a second aspect of disruptive innovation that is also very well studied. That is how these innovations get, I mean, the adoption cycle. And there is a guy, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Moore, uh, who has written books and he has studied this uh, a lot as well. And what this particular theory says is you start a disruptive innovation with technology enthusiasts, then visionaries, and then there is a chasm. Now, the interesting thing is when you look at how SDN is getting adopted, we are seeing exactly the same pattern. It is kind of very interesting that these theories do end up applying. I mean, they may not apply exactly, but they do end up applying. So for example, today when we say there are early adopters such as Google or uh, uh, NTT Communications and so on, they are exactly the type of visionaries that this book describes or Jeffrey Moore describes. There is a leader in this company who believes passionately about this particular change and the organization is willing to take early prototypes, take some risk, put his or her own resources at stake and then make this happen. And that is what is happening with SDN, with early adopters uh, such as Google or NTT Communication or Microsoft and so on. But at the same time you hear, I mean yesterday I went to dinner and I was sitting next to this guy who is in the hedge fund and he is trying to understand where is SDN and how to invest in this space. And he was trying to tell me uh, this kind of thing that they, he's talking to so many enterprises and service providers and though they are very excited about SDN, they can see the value proposition of SDN, but they are looking for complete solution. They are looking for solutions that they can buy and then deploy and from day one start to realize the value but not take risk with that. So some of these things that are kind of talked about here, uh, you are starting to see uh, in the context of SDN. So as I mentioned yesterday, the way, at least I think, 
this will be absorbed by network operators is there are early adopters that are willing to take the building blocks and build their own solutions and deploy them. There are others that are going to depend on solution providers to build complete solutions and that is how we are going to cross this chasm. And this will happen in different domains of use, data center, enterprise, service providers, and so on. And we have to learn from these early adopters to be able to build complete solution. Now, so the whole emphasis is what can we do to help solution providers um, and other operators to adopt SDN? The early adopters are doing it, that is great. Uh, but I think when you look at it in the future, how to help, it is all about helping solution providers to build solution and then these other operators to be able to consume SDN as a ready-made solution. So I think that is the challenge we as a community face and we will have to focus on going forward. So then the question arises, can incumbents help? Because incumbents are well positioned typically, they have relationship with all these customers, they are in the business of providing solutions, so can they help? Now interestingly enough, People who study disruptive innovations also study incumbents. So when you think about Clayton Christensen, he has been studying how incumbents deal with disruptive innovations. Okay? And there is a very good quote here that says, they would like to leverage what they have put in place to succeed in the past instead of guiding them to create the capabilities they will need in the future. So this is a very interesting quote, I thought, uh, from his book. And then I said, are we seeing the same pattern with SDN and networking? So let me give you an example. Okay? So what, is, what are typically incumbents doing today with SDN? What they are saying is, I have this building block, I have this closed proprietary box that I have been selling and making 60-70% gross margin, so you know, I love it. Now SDN is happening, so I have to play SDN game as well. So what they are saying is that, okay, I can add a little bit of open flow to this box and as a result now I can program this box remotely. Okay? I want to keep all my distributed control plane, I want to keep everything as is but I can just add an open flow. Not only that, I will add a proprietary interface as well because you know, that will help me even further. And then on top of that you can build some provisioning or orchestration applications on the top. Okay? So this is what we are seeing happening and when you look at it. And oh, by the way, the chip vendors are doing the same thing. They have chips, the incumbent chip vendors. What they're saying is, I have an SDK. I can just add an open flow kind of a feature to it, and then I'm done. Then I can claim I'm doing SDN. And does it mean, is it like they are doing what Clayton Christensen says, marginal cost analysis? And is this the result of that? When you talk to them, they say, no, 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 this is the bridge to the future. Because, you know, and maybe it is a bridge to the future or maybe it is a way to preserve the legacy. So I don't know. I think this is something that we have to understand how this plays out as we go on. But I can't resist to kind of quote Clayton Christensen again in terms of what the final end result could be. So he says, so often this marginal cost analysis is what causes successful companies to keep from investing in their future and ultimately to fail. I certainly hope that does not happen in networking. Uh, but at the same time, we also know that those who don't know the history are doomed to repeat it. Right? So this is an interesting thing to think about, just a thought that I want to leave you with. But at the same time, I am very optimistic and I believe that the combination of incumbents because there are many incumbents that know the history, they have been part of the high tech industry, so I'm pretty sure they know how to do this. But the combination of incumbents as well as the challengers will definitely help us cross this chasm uh, with SDN and build complete solutions and help the other providers to adopt SDN as well. Okay? So that is all I'm going to say. But when it comes to disruptive innovation, I think we have the best of the best who is going to come and tell us about how to think about disruptive innovations and bring them uh, in the mainstream. And that is our keynote speaker, uh, Vinod Khosla. I am really delighted and uh, it's really a privilege to be able to introduce him as a keynote speaker for uh, ONS.
He does not need an introduction in a high-tech community like ours, but still, I can't resist it, so I thought I will at least give you some highlights. So we know then disruptive innovation. I mean, you know, he's the person who has been part of it from very, very beginning, has played a very important role. He was the co-founder of Sun Microsystems. So when he did uh, Sun Microsystem, he brought merchant silicon, open source, to workstation. So this may sound, I mean, you know, this is not, uh, I don't know, in uh, uh, early 80s, so uh, pretty amazing, right? And then challenge the computer vendors at the time. Typically, you get to do once and you are very happy, but he did it again. He uh, funded and supported next gen. Uh, that brought best of CISC and RISC to processors. And at the time when Intel was the king of processors and the most dominant player, uh, he had the guts to fund it and make gen next gen happen and challenge Intel. Then you would think if you do it twice, that is good enough. But then he did Juniper. Uh, he incubated Juniper, funded Juniper, and then brought ASIC-based solutions to IP routers and challenged Cisco in the core router business. So third time, then in late 90s, he also supported Serent, and uh, that is a big thing because at the time, the whole transport infrastructure and Sonnet infrastructure was dominated by old ways of doing things and by telecom vendors. And with Serent, he was able to transform that whole infrastructure. So he's one of the guys who has been part of, as I said, disruptive innovation from very beginning and has done it multiple times. Uh, and I was just talking to him before and I said networking hasn't changed since late 90s. I mean, these are the companies that made a huge difference to network infrastructure. And then suddenly everything stalled, it seems, until now when SDN is probably uh, is going to change it again. Uh, now he is at Khosla Ventures, his own venture firm. And he has not stopped. Now he's even making bigger bets. Uh, when you look at his portfolio companies, I mean, I don't follow clean tech as much, but I went and looked at some of the clean tech, and wow, if those bets were to pay off, that will be a huge uh, impact on the society as well. So with that, uh, I would love to have Vinod come and share his thoughts with us.